students because you know we've done that. I know. I'm moving to the <laughs> JV team. They kick to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll get my way call, back there. Call the planning board meeting for April 23rd. Technical difficulties. You all set over there? Not us. <laughs> Okay. Um, general business the minutes from last meeting I've been told are not complete as of yet. Filings. Filings. One nineteen eight lots road. Can I just acknowledge that? Yep. Just acknowledge you got two filings there. I'm doing both together, Bob. The other, it's the, not other, a motion. It's just a the other one is uh, 137 Dodge Hill Road, open space subdivision. Consider them acknowledged. Form A plans. None. Um, bond extension, Villas Phase 2. Um, the, um, Mr. John Byrne is requesting a six month extension. Um, his curving has all been delivered for phase two, so they're working on that. And um, they expect to do paving hopefully in the month of May um, or June. And um, and then they just are have punch list items <coughs> in the asphalt plans. So he's requesting just a six month uh, extension to just wrap that all up. No reduction, just so we're keeping the current bond amounts, but doing a six month extension. What, what's the six months for the set? Um, October 1. October 1. Okay. So that'll wrap up before paving season. And I'll make a motion that we extend. Uh, um, did you, uh, is anybody from the association? <laughs> yes. Is there any? Wait a second, then we can Hold have a discussion. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll second that. This is a um, phase two cash phase bond amendment? Phase two cash and lender's agreement, both. We're holding both. <coughs> The performance deadline in said security agreement is amended to 10 one That one? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Got Chinese symbols in it for some reason. That's the proposal. Yeah. Is there. You got a second from yep. Scott. Yeah. Is there any discussion from the board? From the audience? This one is October 1st. It's <laughs> this is. Monica Lucini, she's from the uh, association, uh, from the trustees. So, no objection as long as it's really done before then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I thought you Hear, hearing none, all in favor of extension? Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? <coughs> and that's to extend both the cash and the lender's agreement. Both. Yes. Okay. Five zero. All right, and then you just you all need to sign that document that you have in the blue file folder. Mm -hmm. Under correspondence other, we just have two things. The first <coughs> thing is um, 219 White East Road. Um, the procedure that we haven't been paying a lot of attention to, but we technically need to do, is when we have a site plan or a subdivision that requires earth removal, but it's incidental to the site plan, like 219 Whitens Road, they technically have to apply for an exemption from that so permit and provide the information that um, Wayne can read you, the basic information, and we just need to vote that exemption. So we request all of the information during site plan review, um, but you need to technically vote that exemption. And then there's the final site plans that are ready to sign, so a motion to endorse those as well. <coughs> Make a motion we endorse the site plan the for 219 Whitens Road. And then a motion um, after Wayne reads the facts. Okay, so, so this is an earth removal board through the planning board. Uh, the exemption category is incidental to an approved site plan. The amount of earth to be removed from the site, 1,330 yards, cubic yards plus or minus. Uh, soil type is sandy. <coughs> Loomy sand, sandy loam. I don't know why they write it both ways. But, uh, there's no contamination, approximate seven to 10 days. Um, 
where the earth, earth is being moved to is the McIntyre pit at uh, Douglas. Number of truck trips, approximately 70. And I think that's it. Seven to ten days, it said. So you're talking ten to, to ten <coughs> yeah, about, to about ten, to ten loads a day. A day. Yeah. All right. So we had a motion to endorse the site plan. You want to do that one? Finish that one first, or do you, do you want to? I'll second it. Okay. Is there any further discussion before we endorse this plan from the audience, board? All in favor? Aye. 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 How many signatures? Okay. Opposed. On the abstain. I'm going. I'm going to abstain because I was not at the last meeting. So that's 401. Morning, Lydia abstains, and then we need a motion <coughs> to grant the exemption, the earth removal For permit the earth exemption. I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion on the earth removal exemption from the audience? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You're in? Yeah. <laughs> okay. They didn't talk about that. Mm -hmm. So, we all have to sign these. We all have to sign the site plans, yes. Yeah. And what about this one, guys? And that one, no, I will write up an approval of the assumption that it's put in the file folder. So, everybody signs the two villas, and mm -hmm. everybody signs the plan. <coughs> Okay, we're running a couple minutes ahead of schedule. So our next will be the public hearing uh, continuation for Forest Edge, but we're going to wait two minutes for the 710 time frame. Give us time to sign the plan. Yeah, you can't just say, Is that when you Okay. So, public hearing continuation for Forest Ed open space reduction. I guess I would just open by saying that um, as, this board, no, as this board is aware, we've been reviewing this for, uh, for a good period of time now, and uh, I guess I would submit that the uh, the applicant has put forth a, a good argument as to not only that this board can amend the special permit, but that it should amend the special permit. Um, and further along that line, we based upon the discussion we had back in March, we had provided an additional submission to the board, which is, I think, up on the screen, and I think you know, I had hard copies as well, of a plan, basically, that would um, separate the uh, grafting parcel into two separate lots to allow one to uh, be dedicated to the telecommunications land and the other one to the, what we call the other grafting parcel. And uh, based upon the calculations we provided, of which I have 
a larger version, even if this were to occur, there would still be excess open space under your bylaw requirements. Thank you. I can actually read this one. <coughs> Included in the table format on the plan that we had presented. I don't know. Does anybody want a paper copy of that plan as well, or are you good without it? Mm -hmm. copy of it? So there were two separate approaches taken on calculating the open space: one with and one excluding what we call the telecommunications land. The telecommunications power land would consist of 18.14 acres, and then the remaining Grafton land would be 29.51 acres. The total land, as we have discussed in, in, in the Grafton parcel, is 47.65. So the first table that I presented to you also includes the parcel 1A uh, open space that we had not previously discussed. So it gives you an idea of the cumulative amount of open space um, based upon the 40%. We always discuss 37.05 as the required open space. And then looking at the first sheet I provided, um, there would be a total open space less the area to be used by Verizon Wireless of 1.1 acres of 81.38 acres. So as I highlighted and bolded on the form, there would be 44.33 acres of excess open space. And then on the second page, if the consideration was to exclude the telecommunications land, the 18.14 acres, there would still be, as calculated <coughs> uh, and highlighted on there, excess open space of 27.37 acres. So under either one of these approaches, the, the existing condominium development would still have excess open space. I, uh, what we've tried to provide to this board based upon request is that, you know, there had been a lot of discussions about the conservation restriction we acknowledge that that was something that was included in the decision, had not been uh, put into place, but even if that had been something that was in place, I think we all concluded that it would be possible to amend the conservation restriction to allow what is being proposed in any event so that, in fact, um, we would be in, I guess, basically the same position where we would be before this board requesting this type of relief. Um, we've also presented to the town <coughs> documentation that would preserve and protect the remaining open space uh, based upon a conservation restriction that has been submitted for review to town council. I understand, you know, there's going to be some perhaps required edits to that, but conceptually what it would do is to preserve that area of, of open space. Uh, we had also discussed, I think, at length the need for a facility in this particular location, a wireless facility, the importance to Sutton and Grafton, um, I think as acknowledged by the town of Grafton. I know it would be, you know, Grafton's preference, as has been articulated, is to have perhaps the tower placed upon a town-owned, Grafton town-owned parcel, um, but we had provided information as to why that would not be a suitable alternative um, based upon Verizon Wireless as RF engineering. They were able to exclude that because it simply would not provide the necessary coverage that is uh, Verizon Wireless to accomplish at this location. So, and uh, I, would, I guess I would respectfully say that uh, I, I believe the you know the issue as for this board is really <coughs> this relates to compliance with its bylaw requirements for open space, and I think that we've illustrated full compliance with that, with the uh, utilization uh, of the of the tower. Okay. Um, can you explain to the board on parcel 1A how you calculate 35 acres, 20, 24.94 acres of open space? Approved original plans 
list two different parcels. Um, the all the land in Sutton, basically, and all the land around. Those were the two parcels on the original application. And this um, <coughs> table listed basically the open space on all the land in Sutton, which includes the 9.97 as a total of 24.97. And if you look at the detail on the plans, the areas are spelled out. What is to be included as open space and what isn't in compliance with the requirements that the site plan show what is open space. So um, that kind of goes to that question. If the original plan says the only open space in Sutton, including the 9.97 <coughs> was 24.97, what has changed, although if you say 24.97 is what's on the Sutton parcels, 9.97 plus whatever's here for the approved plans, plus the remaining land in Grafton, you're still, I think, at 15 something. So you're still over, but there's definitely a discrepancy between what's on the approved plans and what's here. If I may, <coughs> the way the space was calculated in the 35 acres was the 35 acres minus the things that are not open space. So if you take out the roadways, the driveways, the buildings by your bylaw, they were subtracted out of the 35 acres. The remaining area was considered open space. The bylaw says. So the lawn around the building is <coughs> considered open space? Yeah, according to the bylaw, yes. I don't know how it was calculated originally, but I do know that this time it was done that way. So if you, the bylaw says what's not considered open space, detention areas are not open space, they were excluded. Driveways, detention areas, infrastructure, buildings, decks were all subtracted, and what was left was considered to be the open space. <coughs> so I would say that the plan that's presented isn't real detailed in that respect. Like, the, the, um, that that really should be more clear, like it was on the original approved, I shouldn't say like it was, like it almost was <laughs> on the original approved plans. Um, <coughs> if you're in, in including it as open space, I, th I think you're still over, but we want to comply with the regulations and the regulations stipulate that that open space needs to be clearly shown on the site plan stamped by the license <coughs> surveyor. Um, Again, we went, We knew that we never included any of that in the 35 acres, and to be as accurate as we could, mm -hmm. we subtracted out what wasn't and added it in. Whether it's considered open space or not, there's still plenty of excess. It just makes it more excess. <coughs> and then at the request of the chairman, we looked at could we carve out a separate lot, and we actually can. Um, there can be two lots in Grafton. They're um, four main lots. They both have adequate frontage area, et cetera. So we could, we, it's up to the board. If the board wanted us to carve that out, we can. We could carve it out and still maintain it as open space, other than the small area that would be used for telecommunication. <coughs> so on that plan, what you're proposing to do is the lot with the radius yes. around it mm -hmm. is for the telecommunication frontage onto Follett Street and Grafton. It has, it has frontage in there. <coughs> There's another frontage further down that almost looks like it's almost a pentagon. That's other frontage on Follett Street. If I may, right over here. So this would be one lot and this would be the second lot, all the remaining. But it would only be for the purposes of property lines. <coughs> the board wanted us, the chair had asked us to look and see whether we could. So the, the 18 acre lot, though, is kind of right. basically a retreat lot with a narrow entrance and then a wider in the back, right? If, if it's a complying lot, it complies that, with the bylaw, whether it's a retreat. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm yeah. just asking yeah. to make sure I understand sure. where the lines are. Sure. It would, it would be what you would consider a retreat lot, I would guess. What is the standard lot, Joe? The uh, standard lot requires 140 feet mm -hmm. of frontage. Yeah. Okay. So it's not, that's their standard frontage in that district in Grafton. So it's 
So it's not really a retreat. It's no. No. it's a no. Why? Both of both of them are actually both in practice. <coughs> Regardless of whether you want us to do that, that doesn't mean that that can't also be open space. And we would intend to keep it as open space. So even though there's 18 acres, there's only 1.8 acres that's actually part of the telecommunications proposal that wouldn't fit in the guidelines of open space. The rest of it would still be open space, notwithstanding the lot line. Comments, questions from the board? I don't know. Can you do, um, I, I'm not really understanding. Can you go up and show us? <coughs> At the last <coughs> meeting, the chair asked whether we could actually create a completely separate yep, lot. What you've done here. And we weren't sure at the time. We can. <coughs> as Form A approval, not required lot, it's not a subdivision. We could draw that plan, have a survey of stamp it, record that plan. That is 18 acres? 18. It's 18 acres. Yep. 18.148. Okay. Even if you subtracted that, there's still excess open space. Yep. We don't intend to subtract it other than if you want it as a separate lot. We can make it a separate lot, but still preserve it as open space, with the exception of the disturbance for telecommunications, which is 1.188 acres. The remaining land along Follett Street. This frontage here. Frontage here. But you don't intend that to be a separate buildable lot. No, no, no. So what happens to the property between your finger <coughs> where it comes back out to Follett and the and the narrow entering? That's all stays open. There's actually an easement running across this parcel for to the back of the uh, to the back of the uh, forest edge. And is that part of the twenty nine point five one acres? So is it is there homes in? is there homes Sorry. between there? Yes, along homes Follett. along Follett Street. Yes. Yeah, between your between, between the there Follett. and the entrance to the telecommunications. Yes, yes there's homes along. Okay. There. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because can, can that come down just a little bit? Just in the edges. Right. So this parcel, this frontage, up to the top, around here, is the twenty nine point five one acres. That would be one. Grafton lot in this parcel, the 18.14 acres be together. could be a separate Grafton lot. Okay. But as I said, that doesn't mean it can't all be open space with the exception of the 1.1 acres that would be necessary for the telecommunications use. In the in the kind of complete open space, not including like you know all the oh, uh, common areas and things like that. So just, You're saying just you would be the 9.97 acres, if right? If you exclude 1A, yep. then it would be the 9.97 plus 29.51 plus 18.14 minus the 1.8, which is what the original, <coughs> the original. Right. But now you're going to minus the 18.14 out. The pure open space. No, I don't, I don't want to take the 18 out. All right. I do. We don't want to. We, we got, if you want a separate lot, we can create a separate lot, but we would still keep the 18.14 minus the 1.8 as open space. Yeah, and I think what town council is advised is that that proposed use is inconsistent with the use of open space. So if you recommended that it not be open space and that it be on a separate parcel. So you would add 29.51 plus 9.97, you're still at 38 in the range, which is still more than what's required. And then if you added in excess open space in 1A, where if you want to more clearly define where the open space is, which would be nice, um, if you want to count it, then you'd have that much more open space. So you're in, in this lot, this can actually be tightened up. If you wanted this 18 to be smaller, I had it drawn out so that it looks better, but as long as <coughs> you maintain the radius, it can actually be tightened up. So if you want to take less than 18 acres, there's still a few more acres there. By bringing the radius all the way around to, to the proposed driveway, bringing this all the way around, we could actually tighten that up. And that would, that would conform to a fall area 
fall zone for the so tower. The radius is beyond yeah, the point. Lake, well, if we could run that radius all the way around, you could actually run it all the way down to where the um, um, access is. You could actually swing it around on both sides and hug that up. So we could actually shrink the <coughs> We just drew it so that it made more sense. <coughs> Yeah. Jen, um, based on our last conversation, you know, I had some concerns with the fact that um, they had failed to um, record this, and as a result of that, I was arguing that they were benefiting. Um, we had some opinion from the um, town council that um, we could not hold prejudice. Was that? Did you get a final kind of ruling around that? Yeah, basically, um, council said that, um, and I'd rather not go into great detail and a confidential communique, but um, that could not be a, really a standalone reason for a denial. Certainly, if the failure <coughs> to carry out that condition then uh, had enough, the, if the effect of that prior noncompliance um, prevented the applicant from meeting the special permit requirements, then you could consider that. That is not the case in this case. Um, the fact that he didn't file it, um, even if you didn't agree with, you know, I could file it even if there was a restriction, even if you didn't agree with that. Um, the fact that <coughs> um, he did not file it, 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 it you still have enough area to comply with the special permit requirements if that area is removed. So, um, and town council did comment that, um, you know, there's no such thing as a permanent, I mean, there's always a way to undo a permanent restriction. It is not easy and that is never the intent, especially as worded in our bylaw, but there's nothing that would prohibit somebody from applying for any kind of restriction to be overturned. Like you couldn't say, nope, we're not considering that. You couldn't. So, um, so if um, the effect of that noncompliance would have said, oh, no, you can't meet the requirement of the original special permit of that criteria, then you can consider it. Otherwise, you can't. And it doesn't affect the compliance. You still have to go through the criteria. This is an amendment to a special permit, so you still need to look at the cri cri criteria for grant of the special permit in general, the five criteria, as well as, you know, just kind of go through the um, requirements um, in the condominium bylaw. You want to take a look at those. Um, but other than that, uh, you really need to weigh it on those merits is basically the general recommendation from council. You need to weigh the application on those specific merits. Which is why we're kind of talking about can he comply with the open space requirements, can he not comply with <coughs> the, the specific definition of open space and open land, which is fairly broad. Can I just make one more comment? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so based on that, I understand, I, I hear that. But also, too, there was something that kind of that you said that kind of makes me curious. Mm -hmm. So when you say that if they if it had been recorded, mm -hmm. it would be a very it would be a more challenging process to unwind it. Mm -hmm. So I feel that there is benefit because we've now taken that on that process out, mm -hmm. and it's a much simpler process now because he did not record it. Like that's that's my concern. Yeah. Is that but does that hold any water? It's still not grounds. It's still not grounds, and it, you know, it's and it's unfortunate. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so we can look at it from the perspective of today, it's a clean slate. Now we're looking at it saying, based on the criteria of open space <coughs> for a, you know, a, a subdivision or a... Um, does it meet the criteria. Does it meet the criteria. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bob? Um, <coughs> it, it's, uh, and I want to be done with it, first of all. Uh, I was, uh, for myself, from my seat on the, on the Sutton's planning board, I must have been asleep at the wheel. And I want to apologize for putting open space in Grafton. Mm -hmm. what, were the lights on in the room when we did that? Is there any open space in Sutton that 
that Grafton is in charge of? That's crazy. That, that you know of, I, I just, uh, I'll, I'll never be here again. <laughs> um, open space is open space. And, and I find myself sitting here wanting to say, is Grafton fine with mm. this stuff in your open space? Because it's, it's we should have never even, we should have never even put that open space in someone else's town. But, so uh, so we, we, we dropped the ball. I, I, for one, I dropped the ball. I should have raised my hand up when we were doing that. Just on what I was thinking. But it didn't come to me. Uh, and we, we have a mess. I want to be done with it. Open Actually, space has nothing in it. But this is not. This is in another town. So what am, right. I, what am I doing talking about open space in another town? We put ourselves in that position, and I want to. And I'd like to be out of it and have open space in Sutton. <coughs> and that's the rest of it's Grafton's business. Yeah, I mean, I don't think if you look at the bylaws in place at the time and the current bylaws, which are fairly consistent, there's really nothing prohibiting them. I mean, it's it's a parcel. You're looking at a parcel. This parcel happens to cross the town line, so there was certainly nothing prohibiting them from counting the area that crossed the Grafton town I line. Do, I won't do it again. As their open space, <laughs> I don't know that you'll have a choice if it happens again. Is what I'm trying to say, um, but. I mean, the complication that arose, I think, when we started looking at restricting the open space was that you certainly can't give land in Grafton to Sutton. We uh, can't deed land in Grafton if to if Sutton. May, if I may, and that's really a key point. This, when this started, I had put this in the hands of an attorney who has since retired, get it restricted. And it was pushed back to me because it was in a different town. And my understanding is that Sutton cannot have a land interest in an adjoining town without legislative approval. Mm -hmm. Where it went from there, I don't know, but then most recently when we're trying to put this together, <coughs> I went to look to see how the other developments in Sutton were restricted, and I can't find anything on record for the other, for the villas, for example. There's no restriction on their open space. I'm not by myself here. No, the uh, open space in both the villas in Woodburyville Heights is held by the association, and the master deeds have restrictions on the use of the open space. But that means they could amend the master deed without coming here. So I'm not. This is. I'm not the only one out here that has this problem. I'm being held. I at some point I understand to a different standard. I understand why because it's it's fresh and it's raw. It was a mistake was made. We want to correct it. If we had had that foresight, we could have narrowed down all the excess open space, and carved it out back then. So it's easy, it's, it's easy to say, if we had had that restriction, it would have been more difficult. <coughs> but it's also easy to say that had we had any foresight at all, we would have just carved out everything that wasn't required for open space and not included it. So hindsight being 2020, there's a lot of moving parts here. Bottom line is we'd like to be able to put a cell tower there. It will be held in a nonprofit for philanthropic purposes. There's plenty of excess open space that we're not even going there. And then we, the only thing stopping us from finalizing the deed restriction now is what are we restricting? We would prefer to restrict the whole thing with the excess of the 1.18, 1.88, whatever it is the one acre and get the whole thing all bundled up. That's that's what we're asking for. But yeah, there were mistakes made on all parts from the very beginning. And now we have a chance to rectify it. And we're just asking to allow us to exclude a small portion so that the um, the cell the telecommunications people can fill an important need in applying Grafton. It's not by you removing that from the open space requirement doesn't guarantee a cell tower. It goes through the process in Grafton. That was my question. <laughs> so we have gotten some correspondence. Um, I guess people weren't able to be here tonight, so I'm going to read it into the record. It's, uh, from Carla Alder Alderucci. Kara Alderucci. Kara. Um, to the members of the Sutton Planning Board, as residents of Forest Edge, we are, have appreciated your constant attention to many issues that have arisen and been debated in our community since 2006. It is well known and documented that our community overall has experienced frustration 
with delayed development on the part of our builder, as well as the inaction from the homeowners association that has not always exercised its power to serve the community's best interest. <coughs> it is likely that tonight's motion, RE open space, will pass the Sutton <coughs> appeals process because of the technicality loophole that Mr. Bruce and the telecommunications legal team has exploited to their fullest advantage. Should the motion pass, it will be an issue that the town of Grafton will ultimately need to hear, but tonight we express our personal disappointment in the way the condo board especially ha essentially handled over, appro over its approval to Mr. Bruce and his team without due process with the Forest Edge residents. It never should have gotten to this point. And we find that the abhorrent that Mr. Bruce is going back on his word of how the open space would be defined. Again, it is Scott, in my opinion, uh, position, as well as the majority of Aerial Circle and Blackstone Street residents, that the proposal to reallocate the open space to allow for a cell phone tower negatively impacts the community and ultimately only benefits Verizon and Mr. Bruce. We will continue to express our opinion to the Town of Sutton as well as to the Homeowners Association as future issues affects Forest Edge come up. Sincerely, Cara and Scott Alderucci, 105 Aerial Circle. So that becomes part of the record. With that read in the back. Uh, Gary Matthew, 109 Aerial Circle. <coughs> uh, first of all, familiar with the legalities of the expression excess open space sounds like too much of a good thing like excess good health regardless of what the diagram show take issue with a couple things first of all the use of the expression rectify that implies that a mistake was made 12 years ago or whenever 13 years ago that's not the case. The mistake would be if this is changed now. The other is moving parts. How many other moving parts will come up that we've seen in the last 12 years and more moving parts? When we bought these units, we were told by the seller that all of that was going to be open space or conservation land. That's what the purchasers were told. That's what this board was told. In its wisdom, the board approved this. Now, the question about which town whatever is in, in a sense, that's irrelevant because the permission to build the development was based upon saying, okay, we're using so much land and we're going to have so much open space and conservation land. Whatever town it's in, it should be carved away and reallocated. Uh, I'm one of the trustees of the association. Not a single resident that I have spoken is in favor of any other use of this land other than as conservation. And I'm sure that a donation of this land would be a great tax deduction, whether it's to the Grafton Land Trust, Audubon <coughs> Trustees for Reservations, whoever would be glad to get it. The IRS would be glad to give a, uh, a write-off on it, and everybody would be happy. In a sense, it seems like with the moving parts, the homeowners, this board, were boondoggled because certain papers weren't formed or filed when they were supposed to have been. We shouldn't change the rules ex post facto. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Sir. Jim Layden, I'm the town planner in Grafton. Um, a uh, couple points. Uh, one, uh, we're sort of reacting rather uh, last minute um, on Grafton side because we've got this plan um, over the weekend, haven't had a chance, haven't even had a chance to sort of review the original plans to see where these um, 24 acres arrived at. The last document that we had prior to this um, on open space calculations was something from November 13th, 2017 where the excess open space was 19.39 acres. 
subtract out the 18.14, we're very close to getting to that edge. I think it uh, warrants taking a closer look to make sure we don't inadvertently <coughs> have an impact on that calculation. The second point is that this also reflects a change uh, to the notice of intent for removal from 61A. Um, Town of Grafton is, is of the opinion that this then changes what it was being requested um, and should be re-noticed. Uh, third, one of the challenges here is that the Telecommunications Act is being leveraged as uh, sort of a pressure point. Um, that in the original uh, applications in front of the Sutton Planning Board <coughs> back in 2003, there wasn't this, what other uses can happen in this open space? Uh, this is a use that, yes, it gets permitted through the Planning Board, whether in Grafton. Whether or not it ultimately gets approved by the Planning Board, the Planning Board has its own process. There's other analysis that they need to identify. You've heard that there's a location in Sutton that won't work. We haven't had that peer review. Uh, we feel that there are additional sites, which is why we have an RFP out for a site within the vicinity. So that is, of course, a separate public process um, that I'm sure we're going to be hearing from the residents of Forage, Forest Edge, um, should it actually come to be. Uh, the main point I uh, want to be able to identify is that there's a lot of uh, moving parts that basically come in right at the end. Um, it was commented that the trustees um, don't support it. Uh, one of the things within your bylaw specifically identifies that, um, oh man, I just had it. Um, uh, ownership and responsibility, this is within the bylaw, all common land and facilities shall be owned and maintained by private corporation in the form of a homeowners association uh, that shall be responsible for each ownership, for uh, such ownership and maintenance. Um, trustees have been, um, uh, are responsible for some aspect of Forest Edge. I can, so I can appreciate looking at the town of Grafton taking that ownership and a question being risen, um, but why wasn't that transferred um, and is, why isn't that the responsibility of the Homeowners Association for Forest Edge? Um, and still sort of in play, as, as we said. Um, there are other entities, there's conservation restrictions that could have been put in place, there's Grafton Land Trust, it's not a municipal entity. There are other options that could have been exercised for this application. Uh, so, um, Town of Grafton has already relayed uh, its uh, opinion that the original decisions of both the Planning Board and the ZBA uh, should stand, um, that uh, we're here because of an opportunity uh, for a cell tower, not for something that was consistent in the original um, planning of this development. If I leave this to Chairman. <coughs> Anyone else on the board have any questions <coughs> or comments before? No? Go ahead. Right. If, if I may, the only land under the control of the subject of the association is parcel 1A. They have control of the open space there, no question about it. 1B and the Grafton land are separate. So notwithstanding what the Grafton town planner says, the trustees control one area, <coughs> no question about it. There was a suggestion that it be donated, valid question. That would just change the applicant here as the land that Grafton had an RFP on was donated to the town of Grafton further up on Paulette Street. And I did my research as far as different land trusts. There are cell towers that are located on various land trusts throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Changes the applicant, doesn't change the use. As far as 60, the acreage, we could tighten up the 18 acres, no question about it. The 18 acres removed still leaves more than enough open space. We could take up less than the 18 and leave even more open space. The fact that they got it recently, we submitted this a while before. And finally, with respect to 61A, the forestry restriction, we provided appropriate notice to Grafton and they opted to not ex exercise their rights under that. And we did provide proper notice and we get the return receipts on the whole thing. On my premise, on the premise of the 
18 acres? No, we said to remove the entire parcel. The entire parcel. Because we didn't know what we were going to do. We said to Grafton, we want to remove the entire parcel. And they did not exercise their rights under it. When was that, <coughs> when was that exercise? I thought it was a year ago. It's been a long time. It's been a long time ago. So it was in 61, which it is the four. Is, it still is. Not 61A. It's mm -hmm. in 61, mm -hmm. um, which is the forestry division. And we, we told them that we wanted to put a cell tower, and we wanted to remove the entire part. Our intent was to remove the entire parcel, and then put back in what wasn't necessary, but to keep it in forestry. But they did have the option at that point. I mean, what was the sale? I'm trying to understand. It wasn't. It was a conversion. Oh, conversion. It was a conversion. And we said we convert the whole thing because we didn't know what we were actually going to need. So the cleanest thing is take the entire thing out and then put it all back in what we wouldn't use at one point two hours or so. So the five years back taxes that go with that <coughs> tax uh, program were paid on the entire parcel. It never was rolled back, sir. They they didn't exercise the option. They had the option to take it. Right. So, so it's just a conversion from right. forestry to how is it classified now? How's it classified now? Forestry. Forestry. They, it's still forestry. So and what we would intend to do is convert the small parcel to keep the rest of it. So you notice the, the town of the conversion. Mm -hmm. They went through the process, didn't exercise their first right of refusal, right. and you decided to just leave it the way it is for That's now. That's the way it was. So when there's going to conversion, what's the basis of the first right of refusal? Because I know in a sale, the yeah. town would pay. I don't know. I don't know. There, there, there was clear. no PNS. There was no appraisal. Right. There was nothing for us to go by. So we so were. How can that be a conversion? We were following the interacting with the planning board, trying to enforce the special permit because we don't have a documentation. We don't have an appraisal to actually go by. But it's not a sale. It's a conversion. The statute is clear. Yeah, I think that's a that's separate good. issue, anyways, yeah. from what's before. Right. No, but I, it is. But can I speak again? Yes. What it's What just frustrates me about this this project is that you're, you, there's a curveball around every time we speak to you. And like when you came to us for, you know, moving from four, you know, four uh, building units to down to two, we moved through pretty quickly on that. It's pretty straightforward. But on this, it's just one curveball after another. And that's why the extra scrutiny, you, you kind of brought this on yourself by the extra scrutiny. And my frustration at this point is, is that every time I turn around, there's another piece of data that I have to consider to to comprehend what's going on here. And, it, and it's, for me, the more layers on there, the harder it is to see the true picture. So I'm feeling really frustrated that this is like some sort of, I don't know, I don't want to use the word because it's I, I But I don't think anything's changed from the beginning. The, the request <coughs> was to remove a little over an acre from the open space requirement. Then there was a question, had it been restricted back then could it still be done? The answer to that was yes. The fact that it's in forestry really isn't relevant. The fact that it was it was, what was, the, what was the point of it though? Huh? What was the point of it? The forestry? Yeah. Taxes. The forest, it, it's a the huge tax. No, I understand why you go into forestry, right. but why would you remove it and then put it back in? Just for this parcel. Because you have to. For the 18 acres or no, no, for no, no, all of graft? No, no, just the. the because we never knew where we were going to actually be in there. Be in there for what? For the cell tower. So we didn't know at the time when we, there was not even a cell tower plan at the time. There was a concept. There was no engineering. We didn't know where it would be on the site. We didn't know what the access would be. So advice to council was take the whole thing out and then put back whatever you don't need. But that doesn't, you know, that's a red herring here. The tax issues in the, the chapter land is a red herring the issue. No, but how can it be if there's no, with, with 61 or 61A, when there's usually an off, some sort of like monetary amount that the town would consider to buy that property for, because it has to be, you for know. For sale, absolutely. Right. The statute also provides for conversion. Okay. Well, it's, we don't need to but, run but that path, but it's, but it's, not, it's just said, another piece of information that just continues to frustrate me. It's not a curve here. It's, a, it's irrelevant. But it, it's just more layering yeah. of complexity. It is. Yeah. I can see which, that. Which adds concern to me. Because it's like, i got to sit here and poke through every piece of complexity to understand 
like the truth of what's trying to go on here. The truth, the underlying matter has never changed. We're asking to remove a small portion from a huge open space area <coughs> to allow Verizon to apply for a permit. And again, had this been conveyed to a land trust or to another entity, or to the association for that matter, it changes the name on the application, just like there was an RFP in Grafton for the land up the street that was donated by the Dauphiné family. Same thing, it's pound land, that's where they want to put it, it doesn't <coughs> work um, for Verizon, but they want it up the street. And of course they'd want to take this because the next step would be try to amend it and put the cell tower in. Same thing. So may I speak? Yes. So one last thing to kind of clarify. It's a nonprofit. Correct. So if there's no profit involved, what's the big push for this? Who is going to benefit? The charities that I will donate the money to. It's a nonprofit. Okay. The requirement is from the variance that are held by a municipality or a nonprofit. Okay. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. And over the years, they've been youth groups, sports, arts and music, veterans association, medical research. That's what I've done over the years. Okay. And that's what I would continue to do. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. It's a nonprofit. You don't need to no, 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 be yeah. defensive. No, but I, I want to explain. Yeah. I yeah. want to explain. It's curious. not going, like my son says, it's not going into the jet ski fund. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the intent here. It's to do good things with it. It's an opportunity to do a lot of good things. Mr. Chair, I'm a, a, just a suggestion. It's your call. Um, we gave this 35 minutes. Um, <coughs> I thought it'd be clearer. It's not any clearer. I, I'm going to suggest that we, uh, <coughs> we continue or we take a vote because. Um, I'm not sure what the best move is, but we do have 7.45, we have two, uh, two items on our agenda. They're also gonna take time. Um, and I'm looking at the clock. The way, the way I read the information from council is that as a board, <coughs> it's being suggested by our council to make this a separate lot. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was, that, that was my intent a few meetings ago. To make this a separate lot. I'm not comfortable with it by any means. I'm not. It, I think it goes against what the developer originally said. And I don't like going back on somebody's word. But that's what our council has suggested to us. Or at least that's the way I read the information coming back. That's all I'm going to say. With that, we either need a motion to continue or a motion to allow the the lot to stand alone um, can i just make we ask one more question so you said there was criteria to evaluate this yeah. so can we go back to like this is square one and now we've got to evaluate it based on that i mean that's what i think we should do is put the scrutiny to it mm -hmm. that this is a valid that meets the spirit and mm -hmm. the law of open space can, is that is that spelled out for us to review that right now yeah, or is that something we want to Put to the next meeting, but you have a new <coughs> definition of open space, but you're reviewing this is a request to amend the special permit. So you're looking at the special permit criteria, the condominium bylaw special permit criteria, and the general special permit criteria condition items one through five. So that's what you're evaluating this um, in accordance with. So you're going through those regulations, making sure. You think it's consistent with those things, making findings in particular with the five criteria in section, I believe it's 5A of the zone yeah, bylaw. Uh, <coughs> and, and then you're deciding, and, and you have your input from council. I think everybody agrees, certainly not in an ideal situation. There was an approval put in place, there was expectations based on that approval. There's a few questions that result. You know, does the applicant have a legal right to make the application he's made? And whether you think it's right or not, does he have a legal right to make that application? And then what standards that does the board judge that by? And where do you go from there in terms of action? So, 
if you you yeah. know, go ahead if you you know want to table and handle the two next items they're pretty brief i would think they're very brief and then you can come back to this if you want but um we do have a, an approved extension um through tonight there's certainly a question whether the applicant needs to agree to further extension of this hearing um, so um, we may need to make a decision or at least tell exactly what you need for additional information and or if you think you have enough information close the hearing and, and uh, schedule the date for deliberation and writing of a decision. If we if we were to say okay, you know, go. <coughs> what's the next process like with Grafton or, you know, well, does I there would, have to be an accord or? I would suggest that this is a complicated issue, and that we don't want all the mistakes that have happened between the last approval and today's date. <coughs> so I would suggest if the board feels they have all the information that they need, that they would motion to close this hearing and that you would ask myself to work with council to draft. And you would, you, would, you would let the applicant know where the majority of the board is leaning. So, and because you have to direct me to draft an approval, an approval with conditions or a disapproval. And then we would schedule the date and time for that. Um, I would work on that with council, and then we have that meeting. The hearing would be closed; no more input could be had, um, and you would issue that decision in a public meeting. John. After that, if the board decides to approve or approve with conditions, there's an appeal period of 20 days from the date it goes on file with the town clerk, and then if it's an approval or an approval with conditions. Once those conditions are met, the applicant has the ability to then apply to the town of Grafton for te a telecommunications tower permit in accordance with their bylaws in the Telecommunications Act. And I would assume, Joe, notification of anybody within 300 feet of that parcel. 1,350. There you go. Even a huger <laughs> notification yes. area. So, and part of that any if you're to move forward on this part of that is pinning down that needs to be a firm form a plan and if you're going to count any area on 1a as open space it needs to be defined sure so that's a set we can we certainly create a new plan we'll tighten up and minimize the telecommunications lot um, we'll certainly clearly define what's being counted on 1A, which by the way, even we'll do it, it's still not necessary to meet the standard. There's still more than what the requirement is, but we'll still clearly define it. And the one thing that I would also add is that as part of, uh, if it were to be a grant with, <coughs> with or without conditions as part of it, mm -hmm. we would, I would like to wrap up the entire restriction on the same size. So um, it could be one, it might be two insurance, but it, it, either way that restriction has to go in place. I would just see it as an opportunity to bundle it all together. <coughs> Any comments, John? I mean, I, I think the spirit of, see, the problem I'm having, <coughs> so forget about the fact that you didn't, you know, I can't rule on the fact that you didn't do what you were supposed to do the first time based on what you promised. So letting that go, if I sit down and I look at it and go, okay, so what is open space? Open space is contiguous space that, you know, creates an atmosphere of open space. The problem I have with this project, even if you were to put it down to one point something acres, just the road and the tower, is that this is smack right in the middle of the open space. And it kind of takes away the whole purpose of open space because this is, you know, an industrial project. I mean, it's... But here's the deal, John. Yeah. It's kind of start from go. The proposal now before you is the open space proposal before you is the weird shape parcel. Yeah, it's the 18 minus acres. the tower. So if he walked in today under the current bylaw 
and that was the open space proposal, does that open space, without a doubt, town council's told you, that tower doesn't meet the <coughs> use. The tower and all the land required for the tower doesn't conform with the general definition of open space. You're not counting it as open space. You shouldn't have it even in the open space in any way, shape, or form. If John Bruce or whoever decides to, on their own, restrict anything that's not 1.18 acres, that's his thing. He can do that. But what's left is what will become the site plan open space. And is that is that consistent with the definition of open space? What's left? Is that consistent with the definition of open space? Do they make the minimum requirements? You know, and that's the one you want to make sure. You want to make sure going forward that you have a drop dead date on when that restriction has to be on file. You want to, I mean, we've already said in the building permits for phase two that he doesn't get occupancy until that's on <coughs> file. So that's uh, on the side. We're not issuing any occupancy permits until that's in place as well. But you would want to reinforce it on a new decision you make here. We under, I fully understand that. And you know, at the risk of sounding like I'm whining, that's a different standard than the villas. They don't have a restriction in getting yeah. occupancy permits. So <laughs> I, and I get it. And I'm perfectly willing to comply, but it is a different standard. They have a restriction within the master deed but not enforceable by the plan. We have the same thing in the master deed. Scott? I have a comment. Bob, any further comments? Nope, I'm ready. Okay. So my, my comment goes back to you offered to tighten that up mm -hmm. less than 18. Sure. In my mind, to reiterate what Jen said, it's not a use that's allowed in the open space. <coughs> There's a lot of things that went wrong here. And we need to fix it to the best of our ability. And I think the best of our ability is to separate that lot, get it out of the open space. I apologize to Grafton, sincerely. You're going to have to deal with it. But that's, that's where I'm at right now. The tower, the road does not belong in the open space. I, drew, I, I do believe he has the option to amend whether it was recorded before or not based on some information that we've had. So that that's my two cents. Mm -hmm. Joe? I just have a quick question. There was comments that were uh, made as far as providing a revised plan, redoing the calculations, showing where those acres are. Is that something that is going to be a condition of a decision, or is that a document that's going to be reviewed in an open meeting prior to the close of the hearing? I guess I would say that depends on how the motion gets made, whether we continue or we separate it totally. But we got to go one way or the other. That's only information that's been discussed in this meeting, so you could certainly receive that information <coughs> post close of hearing. I mean, I don't know that there's anything to discuss once you receive it. It's going to be, have to be at least, at least 18.14. Uh, it's going to have to be less than 18, 18.14 acres or less coming out. It will be less. It will be less. So I don't know. Giving you more open space is probably not something you would mind, generally. And then he already has. You definitely needs to, the, if you're going to count open space within parcel 1A, it has to be defined. But even without that acreage, you're still over. You're over by a little bit. Right. So I'm but not sure that there's any value in the exercise of trying to define what's in 1A if it's not necessary. Uh, you know, there are some certainly some broad areas within 1A that could be right. easily defined. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest at least those broad areas should be. As they were on the original approach. And we will have work with Jim for our blocks around. Comments from the audience? I'll make it. Go ahead. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, me. Uh, Adam Ray, 46th <coughs> Street. Um, 
I think you're talking about a lot of uh, 1.1 acres. It's irrelevant. You're going to massively develop this property. If you've driven around and you've looked at these cell towers lately, like I have, they're incredible. They are enormous. And they're also not on a ridge like this Lazy Hill is. Lazy Hill is straight up and down on both sides. So they're all, they're elevated, but they're all on flat ground. You go down 146, 395, <coughs> they're everywhere. They're between, maybe sometimes at each exit, like exit four, exit five, they're everywhere. So uh, that's one thing. Um, my, my phone still works, that's another thing. Checked it in Millbury Street, Collette Street, Millbury. It seems that Sutton needs this tower, because when I drive from Graft and I go to Charlton, I lose cell coverage right in that little spot right there. They're working on it. They're working on it. <laughs> so maybe, you know, you guys could give, you know, they could do a, an open space swap. You can put your cell tower in Sutton, and uh, we won't be affected in Grafton by it. Because it's going to be incredible when it, go, if it goes up there. It's going to be devastating, to say the least. Um, let's see, what else? And I couldn't find another cell tower. That would be, <coughs> this location would be unique amongst all cell tower locations. I have not found another cell tower location that would match this one. So I don't know if anybody could point one out to me. Um, and they're just, uh, it's just too bad that there's going to be a clawback of open space that was negotiated, you know, what was it, 13 years ago? For the development of huge commercial industrial projects. It's incredible. Uh, it's about all they do, I guess. I just don't know what happened to the original agreement and how the project was even continued without going back and, you know, being <coughs> in compliance with that agreement again. He got, you know, to carry on 13 years later with, you know, variances and whatnot, but still not being compliant. So, I don't know. Uh, just know that uh, it'd be nice if you guys could find a little space for this tower and such. Thank you. I'd like to, to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we close the hearing and that we let Jen work with town council to draft up the conditions. Yeah. All right, so you're going to conduct wait. deliberation. I'll second that. Okay. Um, so you're going to call it connect, bleh, sorry, conduct deliberations at a future meeting. My question is, <coughs> do you want me to work with council on conditions for approval, approval with conditions and disapproval, all three, <coughs> and then you can consider those? Because what you're going to do in your deliberations is what we've already talked about. You're going to go through those special permit criteria, and you're going to decide does this comply, does this not comply? You can do that now before you finish closing that hearing to kind of get a sense of that if you'd like. I'm okay, at time. Or, yeah, that's your decision, obviously. But, or you can do it during deliberation and go through the criteria and then decide which way you want to go. I just need to know what you want me to prepare. If you want me to prepare, I assume there's no just flat approval. It's either an approval with conditions or it's a disapproval. I, I would think those would be the two options. And yeah. where's the, I don't know if the applicant, I assume the applicant kind of wants to know where the board's leaning at this point, but it's up to you whether you want to. No, yes. <laughs> She's at, well. Open this space well, has nothing in it. Mm -hmm. That's what open space is. But, but it's <coughs> buildable lots become buildable, and I know people have explained it to me. I still don't get it. It says not buildable, and uh, so open space is supposed to be open space. Scott, I guess I'm inclined to. Um, <coughs> correct the wrong and correcting the wrong in my mind is that the he the developer shall ensure through deed restriction that the open space be kept in an open or natural state and not be built upon for residential use or development for accessory uses such as parking or interior waste <coughs> that's my inclination so I'd like the option Where 
hear you. <laughs> so I don't, I'm sorry. I mean, the open space with a chunk removed or all of the open space? <coughs> I'm inclined to deny this consideration for separating any amount of land out for cell tower. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. You've heard where I stand. Yeah, go ahead and denial. Mm -hmm. It's not open space. What did you say? Denial. I believe I agree with the, even though council is saying we can't hold a grudge and we're not holding a grudge <laughs> um, but it is in, in all fairness to the folks in the um, project if you will the development that was the agreement and and I am having a hard time getting past that I'm, I'm all for people having opportunity to to do things with their land but but this is something that involves an awful lot of people <coughs> Last one. Uh, yep. uh, I just want to say that I did not approach Verizon. I did not oh, approach okay. Verizon. Yeah. They approached me. The first thing I did is I called Jen and said, what's involved? So she said it would require an amendment to a special permit. That's why we're here. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we okay. got here. I didn't go out and shop this around. <coughs> I was contacted by Verizon because of the geography. And the topography. And I think <coughs> it's important to make clear. Well, and then I just followed the process. I <coughs> called council and said, Can you apply for this? And council said, You can apply for it. anything you want. Let's have a motion and a second to close the hearing. We already did that. We didn't vote on it. No vote on it. Right. With yeah. the condition that we draft up both the uh, approval with to denial get, or denial. Right. To get some information from Jen and from Council as to two different avenues. So we need to vote to close the hearing, time specific for deliberation, right? Yeah, and I, I just need to verify with the applicant that they agree <coughs> to that subsequent date. I'll make that motion. Very good. It's made by John. Oh. It's second by Scott. We just need to ask the applicant if they <coughs> if the board closes the hearing and then just continues to deliberate and make a decision if you're in agreement with that extension. I'm going to win. Town meeting, month of May. Town meeting is May 14th. So the board's next meeting is the 21st of May. So we're not continuing it to a time and date certain. So <coughs> we will be here on the 24th to deliberate. But you'll, if you want to know exactly what time, just call my office. I, anybody I've got an email for, you'll get an email. So if I don't have an email and you want an email of what time, just make sure you leave that with me before you go. So I have yours, I have yours, I have yours. And I have the association. So, um, so we'll uh, pin in that time. I know we already have a 7.10, a 7.30, and a 7.50 on May 24th, so it'll be after 8 o'clock. But call me. All right. So I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 5 0. So the hearing is closed. Deliberation will take place on May 21st. I'll work with Town Council to draft an approval of conditions and a disapproval. And then you'll weigh the project against the special permit criteria, make some findings, and make a decision. Okay. 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 So Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. So 745, proposed by a lot of recommendations. Um, I think it's best if I step off the board for this. Um, 
as part of this discussion may affect the project that I'm involved in. Okay, Wayne's off the board, John, and you're acting chairman. That's a yes, right, yes, John? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I was just looking for the documents, sorry. All right, so we just have two things. We um, did not do a recommendation on Article uh, 25. I confirmed with council having noticed the original hearing, even though you closed the hearing, that you are still uh, within the law as long as this was posted, which it was obviously, to make your formal recommendation on Article 25. Article 25 was the second part of a petition. And basically, when all three petitioners spoke with me briefly about what they were proposing and asked if I had any recommendations, I did make the comment to to the petitioners that because they were thinking about large ground mounted systems in the residential district, because of the very different nature of the residential district, that um, I would suggest they consider also proposing some <coughs> additional screening and mitigation language. Um, this petitioner cho chose to propose part two of their petition was to add this additional language to the large ground mounted solar bylaw. So Which petitioner is this? This is the Car Street petitioner. Okay. Um, chose to add this to their <coughs> petition. So, um, so that's what you see here and I'll, I'm just going to pull it up on the screen. Um, So this is the car street petition. And the language that's proposed, right now you have provision D. Um, John, if you could open the bylaw and look at section 60371D. And that contains the current screening provision for, for installations in the industrial, office light industrial, and um, business districts. And this is a teeny tiny petition. I don't know. <laughs> it's taking for a little over there. Sorry. Where is that document found? It's in your bylaws. You have your bylaws. Can you say that again? You? Yeah, bylaw. Yeah, point to me. I, 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 what do you want? So it's in the large ground mounted solar regulation. So it's section 60371, Roman numeral 6. <coughs> well, in the oh. bylaw, the writing itself. Mm hmm. property shall be visually screened from the LGSP through any one or a combination of the following location distance plantings existing vegetation and fencing not to exceed six feet in height so that's the current screening provision for any installation and of course this was written originally just installations in the BI and OLI so this bylaw, this regulation, now also <coughs> applies to any in installations in the overlay district as well. So if you have a parcel in the overlay or put a parcel into the overlay and somebody applies for a large ground mounted system, they have to comply with these regs. So the petitioner on Car Street said, all right, let, let's also add this provision E. So after D, he's proposing to add this additional language. Any LGSPI, located on a parcel in a residential rural district where the zoning map has been amended to include said parcel in the overlay shall be required to provide any and all additional screening in the form of plantings 
vegetation, fencing, or other means necessary and are appropriate as determined by the planning board in order to preserve the aesthetics of the surrounding properties and to ensure that any and all direct abutters in the R1 district retain vistas reasonably unimpaired by the existence of the LGSPI. It's a petition article. I can't write petition articles for anybody. I just suggested they might want to consider some additional language. This is what they submitted as their petition. So I don't know that it helps <coughs> anything. I don't know that it helps anything, but it, you know, I think it just really definitely says, especially if your installation's in an R1, we're very serious about screening and aesthetics. So does this apply only to this site or all three? No, any site. Any OLI? Any, no, this applies, any, as it says here, any installation in the rural residential. So section D, R, that's already in the bylaw, applies to any installation. This would apply to any installation in the rural residential. Okay. So it's just additional. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, you could certainly say that if the <coughs> board um, took the strictest interpretation of the existing section D, you don't need E, because um, D says, shall every abutting property shall be visually screened. What page do you want? Page 130 of the zoning bylaw. 130371 D. Yeah. D. He has a dog. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm looking for D. Yeah. It's 371 out. D. You see it? <laughs> now I see it. Okay. So that's the existing provision and then the petitioner is 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 saying why why don't we add E as well? It's just additional language for screening in the rural resident anything that's on a rural residential parcel. And we did not have a hearing on this. Are we doing that right now? Yeah, we advertised the hearing. We closed the hearing. As you know, it was a little bit of chaos at the last hearing, so we forgot to vote on this. I confirmed with council that we're still legal as long as this was noticed tonight on the agenda, which it was. Um, and we must make a recommendation on all articles. On the you box. forgot to vote on what? We forgot to vote on this part of this petition. Oh, this petition. I don't remember talking about yeah, it at all. Yeah, we talked about it. Right. Nope, we didn't. Right. That's what we're doing tonight. That's okay. why it's on the agenda. We're talking it. We're so we it was, about it was meant to be on the agenda. Well, it was on the agenda, but we, we failed we to, to talk about right. it. Right. We talked about and voted on the first part of the petition. We did not talk about or vote on <coughs> the second part of the petition, which is a, they were structured in the warrant as two separate articles. So this is the last article on the warrant. So I don't see a downside. So, um, any discussion on this, and then a motion to recommend or a motion to not recommend that town meeting approve that article. All right. Anybody has one away in your opinion? Yeah, I, I finally found it, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm leaning. To, I'm leaning towards adding an e, adding e. Okay. Sure. Makes me crystal clear because tonight lots of stuff wasn't clear. So anything that can make things clear, uh, mm -hmm. you need to do good planning. All right, Scott. I would agree that it should go in. And so, from uh, my opinion, again, I think that this is an industrial project going into a residential area. Um, but in the case of that, if this does go forward, having additional provisions to make it stricter in a residential area can't hurt so so I have a motion I'll make that motion she did she said that she said to recommend the town meeting approve uh, the addition of section E <coughs> I'll second it please second. all right any further discussion any discussion from the audience all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Four, zero. Now this second item, um, as you will recall, on recreational marijuana, there were three articles. 15 and 16 were identical. Pro full prohibition 17 <coughs> was um, 
partial prohibition. So prohibit just retail and on-site consumption. Um, and the board recommended both articles and basically said, um, we recommend that basically town meeting make this decision in effect that, you know, this, this should go to the floor. This is what I wrote in the recommendation memo that goes to the Finance Committee, Board of Selectmen, and town meeting. So the board has recommended this article, this is on the prohibition. Um, as one of two options they feel the town should choose between and enact. If you vote yes or in favor of this article, you are voting to prohibit all forms of recreational marijuana establishment. This article requires a two-thirds vote of those present and voting to be approved. Article 17 is a second option. One of these two articles must pass or the town will be left with no regulation of recreational marijuana and these uses will be able to locate wherever similar uses are allowed. So that's the commentary on Article 15 and 16. The commentary on Article 17, which was the partial prohibition, was the board has recommended this article as one of two options. The town, they feel the town should choose between an enact. If you vote yes or in favor of this article, you are voting to prohibit retail and on-site consumption establishment and allow all other types of recreational marijuana uses, parentheses, cultivation, production, testing, delivery, and research. This article requires a two-thirds vote of those present in voting to be approved. If this article does not pass, and Article 1516 has also been defeated, the town will be left with no regulation of recreational marijuana, and these uses will be able to locate wherever similar uses are allowed. That is what I put in my recommendation memo because I felt that was consistent with what happened at the last meeting. I was asked by both the administrator and the finance committee, all right, I was told that that wasn't helpful. <laughs> that the finance committee, the town administrator, and generally town meeting look to the planning board for their recommendation from a planning perspective of what articles, in this case, which one's better? Which one does it look <coughs> better for the town? So um, I need just on the record um, to, or I've been requested to on the record just ask the planning board for a straw poll of your opinion as a planning board member in terms of which of these two articles you think is more beneficial to the town, a full prohibition or a partial prohibition. So that's what this second agenda item is. Just a, basically a straw poll, so, and then I will add that to this, that a straw poll of four of the planning board members was, uh, you know, preferred article 15, 16 or preferred article 17. Partial. Partial. Full. Huh? Full. Full prohibition, John. I did the, the partial, so that's uh, allowing certain uses and not mm -hmm. detail. Partial, absolutely. <coughs> and this is all within just the MM, the, the currently the MMOD right now, just in South Sutton Commerce Park right now. Mm -hmm. Miriam, mm -hmm. what are you? Partial. 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 So who's, as, as the mechanics, who's going to uh, inform, I'll use that, <coughs> inform the electorate? The night of this town meeting? Carefully, yes. Oh, well, here's how this is going to go. John's decided he's out of town. <laughs> so you say you are in town, too? No, I'm in town. You're in town. So, um... Uh, the chairman may choose to speak <coughs> on marijuana. He may choose to speak not at all. He says no. I thought, actually, Scott, that you were very articulate on this subject. So, I what I everything would, I said. What I, what I would recommend is all, this should always, the recommendation should always be read by a planning board member. These are your recommendations. However, as soon as you read the recommendations, um, I have a presentation, a very brief presentation that I will be doing. It's three of the slides from the, from the um, information sessions, only three of them. So I will do, then do that presentation. So as soon as you give your recommendation, FinCon gives your recommendation, I will ask to be recognized, or you will ask that I be recognized by the moderator. You'll get three slides, and then if there's questions, you can decide whether to answer them. You can defer to me to answer them. And or I can defer to John Eichmann, our actual zoning attorney, will be officiating at this town meeting as opposed to general counsel. So we can always shoot it to him as well. So, but we're gonna do three slides. 
because they're, you know, just the basics that everybody in that room needs to be aware of to make it clear what three choices you have, what the effects of choices or no choices are, and what yes votes and no votes mean. I don't mind doing it. But <laughs> I don't have to, they did it last time. And then. So, so because they're in a certain order, numerically, Huh? If, if number 15, <coughs> complete prohibition, is passed. Mm -hmm. Then you are going to do a motion to pass over Article 17, and we're going to explain that right up front so people understand that if 15, 16 passes, we're just jumping over 17 because you can't have both. Right. <laughs> you can't have both. So, is, so is it the order of presentation that influences this, or what, you know, there's my concern. With anybody, this is, this anybody is, you could guess anything, but this is just the order it usually goes in. The more prohibitive first, the less prohibitive second. So, so what if the planning board said, based on uh, our straw vote, that we would like to take this out of order and move 16 in The first? warrant hasn't been posted yet. If you want me to ask them to switch 17 in front of 15 I mean, and I mean, 16, I, we can do that. I would agree that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we always get up there and say stuff like the planning board has tried, the planning board has done, the planning board has developed so that we have, like it or not, what you see in the town of Sutton. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are a... Uh, people look to you. People look to us. To, and mm -hmm. so if we're standing there with, you know, three opinions on three articles, a little waffy, you know, a little wafy there. Yeah. Right? Personally, I, idea. I think we personally, I think if we're, if we're interested in planning and setting up where this should be done or not done, you know, we should we should be on that tree. We should be, uh, you know, positioning it accordingly. Give me a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I would motion that we jockey the <laughs> jockey the uh, the numbers. So Article 17 is first. in front of 15, 16. No, wasn't 16 the partial? No, 15 and 16 are <coughs> prohibitions. One's a general bylaw, one's a zoning bylaw. So 17 is the partial prohibition. So we would punch that forward. Right. And which one, 20, and which one's the uh, allowance? And then we know where we're going to go after that vote. 15 statement. and 16 are prohibitions. 17 is partial prohibition. So or partial allowance, okay. however you. Okay. Without so you want without retail. Without yeah, that. so you want that move ahead of the prohibition. So you vote the partial first and then the full second. So if, so if that happens and they vote the full second, what happens there? It nullifies the first one? No. If you vote, again, if, you, if the partial passes, you'll pass over the okay. full. And again, we'll explain that in great <coughs> detail that night. The only one can pass. The first one up will be partial if this motion passes. And if that passes, we'll do a motion to pass over the full. If both of them fail, there will be an immediate, and we will need to deal with that. One of them has to pass, so there'll be a motion to reconsider, I would assume. So who's not going to be at this town meeting? I'm not going to be there. John's How about Wayne, you're not know, participating in this? I'll be at the town meeting, but no, I don't think I'm going to participate as a member of the planning board. <coughs> Lonely up here. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, Wally there's a bunch of articles, so you can certainly. Uh, the only reason I was uh, thinking no, of you on this is because you were clearly spoken on this. I think yeah. as many members as can talk on articles should talk. It, people should see the members that they've appointed or elected and see that you know what you're talking about. <coughs> so you guys can mull that over amongst yourself, but we do have a motion to. Pull the partial prohibition article in front of that. Is there a second? Second. Article 17. Article 17 up front. And you call it partial prohibition as opposed to a partial allowance. select zoning allowance. <coughs> I mean, that it's being allowed under Article 17. Partial in allowance, control, would you like it's in a controlled mm -hmm. place and under controlled bylaws as opposed to Put anywhere yeah, you want it in town to oh, with no regulation. partial allowance instead of a partial prohibition. I think that makes well, more sense. Well, uh, yeah. there's going to be a presentation up there, so if that's what you want me to call it, that's <laughs> yeah. what I'll call it. But I, I would, I would say, I go back to that town meeting that 
that people were like out in the street voting uh, with mm -hmm. TVs and stuff, and I think that a lot of people did not did not understand what they were voting well, on. It's a, a semantic of, of words. Well, that was part of it. Uh, the bigger part of it in town, <coughs> there were a lot of people after the fact. Is the majority of people in that town meeting have never been to a town meeting before, and in the cafeteria, there was no control. There Total was disconnect. a lot of discussion. Yep. Nobody listening. A small screen. It was just chaos. It's going to be in, in the there. gym this time, right? No, it's going to be in the You're auditorium. Kidding. But we may have the same problem. No, no, no. We've we've reworked the the, the dynamics. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Everybody's going to sit on somebody's lap. We're not no, going to use There'll be the no gym. cafeteria tables. No, because we don't have the audio system and the video system in there. We just, we don't. So you'd be looking at a screen like this big. Yeah. It, it's just, it won't work. So we're rearranging and actually we'll be doing that. We don't need, if we're all in the gym, we don't need audio anything. <laughs> we're all in the gym. That's not the prevailing opinion of the. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we did talk through this well, at great length, and we're actually walking we through it on the ground we next week. That. Yep. Yes, that's what's. From what I've seen and, and talked with the different people, I suspect there will be a lot of people at this town meeting. Mm -hmm. And based on what happened last year, mm -hmm. and what I've seen at the various meetings <coughs> here, you have got to make this absolutely mm -hmm. as simple as you mm -hmm. possibly can. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't show anything on a screen and mm -hmm. just say, these two articles are a total pro prohibition. This mm -hmm. is a, an allowance of it in a particular area. Mm -hmm. The planning board favors that particular one. Period. And, and you've got to make it simple, yeah. or you're just going to end up with a mess. Yeah, and There's I think definitely been a lot of input, let me just say, to my office about what people feel absolutely needs to be explained which is why it's three slides. It's very simple. Nobody's going to get confused unless they're just totally out of it. And um, the choices will be there. But I think that's why the term of the term and of. And I will send you those three slides. By the way, they're done. I went over them today. Many, many people had input on them, including people who've never seen the subject allowance. before. Yes. If, it, if, if you get up, if we say mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a partial prohibition. prohibition, that's what I want, prohibition. I raised my hand. Yep. Partial allowance. So we'll do allowance. It's, mis allowance. it's misleading. Yep. So I'll fix that heading on the slide and I'll send those to you. And you can take a look and make sure you're comfortable with those three slides. All right. I'll have backup slides because as you know, if you attended the information sessions, there may be other questions that I just want to make sure if somebody asks a question, I have a slide to answer that because a visual is huge. It makes it so much easier for people to understand. All right, Most any other? I, I, I disagree. You, you, nothing on the screen. You just got to say, <coughs> these two are, you, I know this is an allowance of it in a particular area. So, because so. you show anything on the screen and you start talking, as you do, bingo, you've, you've lost them. More questions. You've got five minutes to, to tell somebody, and I just don't. I, I don't think the discussion's going to Everybody's be got their mind made up pretty much when they get there. Yeah, and it's 49 to 51. That's my, that's my concern. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly Which where it's going to be. Which is something on the screen that shows you in your face exactly why it can't be. Could, if, we, if we have vote affirmative here or whatever, can, we, can that be summarized in a half a page piece of paper that's handed out along with the warrant? So please read this before we get to Article well, 15 or whatever it this is. This is required by law. Your recommendations are handed out on the way in. <coughs> if you look at the slides and you like them, those three things, or if you only want one of them handed out. So if you make the presentation, you ask everyone to take 30 seconds to read read that put your glasses on and read it so no one can say that they've been misled mm -hmm. if you don't understand what we're saying mm -hmm. if you don't understand what's on the screen yeah it's, and it's I'm still right there getting written. questions if you'll remember at the last town meeting people were talking about how kids shouldn't be allowed to smoke talking and talking about. about medical marijuana and to this day I am getting calls in my office every day but we're prohibiting medical Blah, blah, blah. That has to be addressed, whether you think it does or not, whether you think it's a stupid question or not. I'm getting the question every day. So the first slide is, 
We're not just, this is the deal with personal use, this is the deal with medical, we're not discussing those, period. That's slide one. Slide two is, these are recreational marijuana uses. This is what we're talking about, these seven uses. Slide three is, here's your choices, A, B, C, that's it. And it says, color coded. <coughs> Red is a prohibition, orange is a partial allowance, and um, no, do nothing is a green go crazy because it can go anywhere. Well, I'm colorblind. <laughs> yes, Bob's colorblind. <laughs> so, but it's all worded very clearly too and succinctly. It has the article numbers and then it has a big warning down at the bottom about the two thirds. You've got to get two thirds. Well, there's um, nothing. At the meeting. Go. Yeah, and <coughs> like I said, those three things are just based on calls that continue to come in stuff that continues to be posted on various unreliable sites and <laughs> or people that probably won't show up at town meeting but if they do that they, they need the facts and confusion I mean you guys sit here every night maybe you're well informed 90% uh, of the people are not informed I hope <coughs> more than that at town meeting will be well informed but the fact is boy it's just not that case all right. Well, let me just make sure I understand what you're saying. Article 15 is a prohibition? Article 15 and, and 16. 16. So Article 15 says to amend the zoning by to <coughs> add a new section, marijuana establishments. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So that allows, mm -hmm. as I read, right? No. No? Keep reading. <laughs> well, I'm, going on, I'm going on to the next one, 16. We're going to amend it again by inserting a new paragraph. No, what are you reading? Well, I assume warrant? I'm reading the warrant. I assume. <laughs> this is not the warrant. So if it looks like this, that's not the warrant. The warrant itself. I'm having challenges with my. Uh, Here's the warrant. It says the warrant. Town warrant right on the front. Right. So it says <coughs> to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws to add a new section VG marijuana establishment that would provide the following. All types of medical, non-medical marijuana as defined in blah, 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 including all of these shall be prohibited in the town. Okay. All of that prohibited. Article okay. 6. So it's a roundabout way. Sure. So one's a general bylaw and the other one's a zoning bylaw. One's a general, one's a zoning bylaw. That's why there's the two. Law I shouldn't say the law requires. Town Council's recommendation, <laughs> and Joe can back me up on this, is that we enact both. Because the language of the law Which can is wishy-washy. It's like bylaw, which could be a general, could be a zoning, so you do both. Yeah, but people don't understand the difference between the two. No, they don't. So it's it could, get, it could get confusing. So 17 is the one that allows it in a controlled area. Yeah, it allows it within the um, that's medical, the, yes. that's the marijuana <coughs> business overlay district. I thought he said he wanted to support 17. He did. He did. Right. Okay. So he wants I mean, 17 16, moved. I'm sorry, 16. No, that's not no. true. Okay. Not 16, 17. 17. He wants 17 moved in front of the oh, okay. Not much. So yeah, we have a second. We got a second. So right. so any further discussion? Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0. Is that an eye over there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a four. So I will request the town clerk shift Article 17 in front of Article 15 and 16, and we'll vote in that order. And then I have your yeah, strong pool number. opinion is three. In favor of partial, one in favor of full prohibition. That's how we group it. Okay, that's uh, it. It is in the language is going to say it's pro is it's not prohibition. It's going to be partial allowance. allowance. Yes, it's going to say allowance. Okay. The word prohibition. Well, what does that mean? No retail, principally no retail. No retail and, and no on-site consumption. It's on Gilmore Drive. And it's on Gilmore Drive. And it's on Gilmore Drive. Right next to the church. Yeah, so I will have right that church. map of that area in backup because we just say. If somebody says, where is this, or where can you do it? We'll say, in South Sutton Commerce Park, <coughs> Gilmore Drive in South Sutton. You try to say that, but then somebody is bound to say, I don't know where that is. So we'll have the map. But we won't use, the, we won't use any more maps and images than we need, but we should have them if we need them. <coughs> I'd like to. Okay. I just have a question going back to the solar. Mm -hmm. Do we have to close? Because does that reopen the, the hearing? No. no. Mm -hmm. close it? no. Yep. 
Okay. Motion to adjourn. And so did there's you, nothing else. Did we do else. the solo overlay mitigation? Yeah, we did that. We voted to, to, to add that. Add that language. Recommend. That was Miriam, second buzz by you. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was, was four. So we, so we just add, add, all we had to do was add the E. <coughs> add E. Yep. We're recommending okay. the petition to article add E. And, and towards that, so Article 22 is from Bob Mackey. That description has been yeah. modified. The, yeah, and I did provide those to you. Um, both DeWitt and Putnam Hill have, the areas have been modified in accordance um, with the, um, I did actually, I, That's I, I did not put them in the, oh yes I did, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong file. Um, they have been modified in accordance with the discussion at the public hearing. Okay, so that's a So this is the Mackey revised layout. You can see the yellow area right. is, now is the, the reduced area, and there was a legal description submitted that goes with that. <coughs> so it's uh, 44.5 acres as opposed to 138. How do we know that description is correct? Because somebody's PE license is on it? Yeah. Well, the deal is town council has told me not to put meets and bounds descriptions in the bylaw. So we have to, when I write the bylaw, we'll probably be using address and map and parcel and referencing a town vote. Because they said no, because think about it. <laughs> if you put meets and bounds descriptions in a bylaw, your bylaw is going to get mm -hmm. really messed. So the boundaries on both of these have changed. Yes, That's and I'm waiting for this hear. to load up. And the Whittier area has been yeah, reduced to we 44 We don't want all of that. We don't want all of that. That's, a, that's what I didn't hear us say. That no, so those, it got changed, those petitioners will be got, are going to be making a, a revised motion. Okay. They do not have to put the original motion on the floor. I have verified that. They'll just be making the motion with that reduced area. That will be the original motion. So right. less confusion there. Not required by law to read the original motion as the petition was written, as long as it's within the scope, mm -hmm. which it is. All right. Yeah. Motion to down as one of the oddest town meetings, Oh, yeah, perhaps. it's going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't miss it. Yeah, I wish I was. <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn. Sure. Second. Sure. Aye. <laughs> All those aye. in favor, aye. <laughs> Let's keep I it up.